Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to compare the S58 found in the G80 M3 versus the N54 found in the E90 335i. So I'm currently in break-in mode on my G80 M3 with the S58 engine and I figured I'd cover a topic that some of you guys have already asked for. Seems like you guys want to know how the N54 compares to the S58. Not just with my subjective opinion, but with regards to how they compare technically. To start with, the S58 has a 7200 RPM redline. The N54 has a 7000 RPM redline. Since I happen to have a spare motor kicking around for the N54, I can show you some of the insides of it. But the main difference between the S58 and the N54 is open deck versus closed deck. If you look at the sides of the cylinder bores, you'll see open space, which is great for cooling, but not so good for rigidity and also not good for sealing area to run high boost pressures. As you can see, that's reading 83.9, but it's actually 84 if that thing was spread out all the way. So the N54 has a cylinder bore of 84 millimeters. Now on the crankshaft side, you have your stroke. So basically how far down will the piston go in relation to the bore? And that is 89.6 on the N54. On the S58, that would be 90 mm. The S58 relates more to the N54 in a lot of ways because it shares the same bore and stroke the B58 actually has an 82 mil bore and a longer stroke for more torque. Something really interesting on the B58 is the compression ratio. It's much lower than it has been on any of these turbo models. It's all the way down at nine to three to one, which allows you to run more boost up high at the sacrifice of down low drivability. So the compression ratio on the N54 was actually 10 to two to one. And that's the same as the S55 and the N55. The M340i with the M Lite B58 actually had uh, 10 to 2 as well, the same as the N54. The X5 and A90 Supra came with 11 to 1, and the A91 Supra has the same engine as the M340i with the lower 10 to 2 to 1 compression. There's the HPFP or high pressure fuel pump for the N54. If you have a higher compression ratio, you'll make more torque down low and uh, need less boost to hit a given power level but you may be more predisposed to knock and you could benefit more from ethanol so the a90 supra has benefited more from ethanol than the a91s and if you run lower compression you can get away with running pump gas at higher pressures the fact that this engine comes with a factory with nearly 25 psi making around 500 real horsepower on straight 93 octane on a three liter technically shouldn't be possible but when you're running lower compression you can get away with it at the sacrifice of less low end torque the peak torque on this comes in at 2600 rpm and falls off at 5600 rpm versus on the n54 where it's 1300 rpm all the way to 5000 rpm so it makes it a little bit more peaky but the benefit with uh, shifting your power band up is this will make power all the way to red line it won't really drop off in terms of wheel horsepower on the n54 the peak horsepower drops off at uh, around 6,000 RPM. I made a point in my last video before this that the M340i had before this was an M light car and kind of like a bespoke M car, but just at a lower percentage, didn't really have all the DNA that you'd need, but it gave you that feeling. On the M340i, there were six exhaust ports to feed the turbocharger versus two ports on the regular B58. That was something that was exclusive to the cars that wore an M badge. That was the point I was trying to make that they kind of have uh, a bespoke cylinder head but the whole motor is not different hence it doesn't get the s designation like this s58 so you can see the dual fuel pumps here they run in parallel so now the b58 only had one of these the s58 comes with two they're run in parallel they'll cycle every 30 seconds they'll alternate so they'll wear evenly under normal driving conditions they both kick in under wide open throttle and they're controlled by these uh, volume control valves right here. So that's how you get away with running so much power on just straight 93. It's the low compression of the engine and the fact that uh, they can deliver quite the volume. The coils are dumb coils. They're Eldor coils and they're the same as the B58 from the looks of it. They're dumb because they have three wires, not four. So you're basically driving the power, supplying power right from the ECU. It gives them more control over when they can fire and what they can do, but they're not independently powered by another source. And then you're just triggering them. They genuinely get powered and triggered via the ECU Direct. They have a big storage reserve here and they're much improved over their earlier BMW coils to make big power, but it seems like they're carryover from the B58. What you'll notice different at the front of the engine here, which I started on the B58, is they shifted all the timing gear to the back. 
because it's such an inherently balanced motor, I guess uh, they figured that it will survive um, and they've worked all the kinks out so they don't have to be serviceable up at the front. If you notice the intake boxes and the inlet routing is quite huge to feed the turbos and they did that so that uh, you can run high boost without it being a restriction versus on the N55 where they're quite narrow. As opposed to the standard B58 engine, I would say this engine is geared more toward performance obviously and less toward reliability just because of the complexity of it. But the main thing is just where they routed everything. From a reliability standpoint, placing the coolant bottle right by the turbos may not be the best idea. They just had to work with the space constraints in this engine bay. It's really crammed in there versus the standard 3 Series of the B58. And that's a similar problem faced on the N54, really crammed in there. Notice the coolant bottle placement. Now the charge air cooler is integrated below the intake manifold. Being older technology, the N54 utilized a regular intercooler air to air. So far this motor has been pushed about 750 wheel horsepower on the all wheel drive X3 and X4 models, the X3 comps. So I think it's safe to say that this motor is going to be good for 800 wheel horsepower on a stock bottom end because it has a lightweight forged crankshaft, forged pistons and forged rods. The main thing is the pistons are forged on here. On the N54 the rods were forged, but the pistons were not. They were strong, but they were not forged as they are on the S58. Another thing to note regarding these fuel pumps is these run at 350 bar instead of 200 bar on the older generation. And the B58, the, the newer generation B58 in the M340i and the Supra also run 350 bar high pressure fuel pumps. On the N54, they were 200 bar and also on the S55. In terms of air intake into the engine, this doesn't use the throttle body, it utilizes Valvetronic and it varies the intake valve cam lift to control how much air makes it into the engine. The N54, N55 and S55 utilized a crank hub that was separate from the crankshaft and it was bolted down and it would use a bolt tension to keep it tight and they could slip. They eliminated that on the S58, it's all part of the crankshaft now, so that issue is gone. One thing that's missing in this area on modern BMWs that used to exist on the older BMWs is this. A bunch of vacuum lines everywhere, clipped here, boost solenoids, vacuum lines running over the valve cover and coming from over there. All points of potential failure. As you can see, this is a pneumatic actuator for the wastegate. And these are less efficient and less accurate. Now you'll have electric motors built onto the turbos. And the S58 has that where it will vary the rod based on electrical motor being controlled by the DME so you don't need all the vacuum lines and that whole mess of potential failure. The factory inlets on the N54 were very narrow and very skinny running at the front and back of the engine. This thing was only designed for around 8 psi of boost pressure and mostly for torque. You can just make it out but down there but that's the inlet going to the turbo. It's quite a large diameter because from the factory this was designed to run high psi over 20 psi versus under 10 PSI. Both of these engines actually utilize single scroll twin turbos. They're related in a lot of ways in that respect. And the crankshaft in the S55 is lightweight, but it also has upgraded bearings and a better oil pump. Capacity wise of the oil pan, they both take 6.5 quarts. So overall, it's just a little bit tighter and it will be harder to work on, more like the N54 compared to the N55 and compared to the B58. But on the front of this engine, it has a mechanical water pump. They went away from electrical water pumps like on the N54, but there is a supplemental pump to boost the coolant line pressure to the turbos. Then that one is electric. From what I read, this actually has a proper oil pressure sensor so you can read oil pressure, not just a dummy light sensor. M cars in general will have extra ducting. They'll have extra radiators, like three radiators to deal with coolant charge air coolers and all that kind of stuff to help with excess heat when you're running high PSI. Now the N54 didn't really get blessed with that from the factory, maybe on the 1M, but otherwise, you know, when you tune these up to run over 20 PSI, you got to think about heat removal and the factory layout is not necessarily conducive of that. As you can see, the bottom side of this engine cover doesn't have any sound bending. So I'm still in the break-in period, so I couldn't really show you beyond just going over some technical specs. 
between the two engines eventually we'll cover this more in depth with some on-road comparisons and whatnot but i think it pretty much covered what i wanted to in this video in a lot of ways an n54 is more related to an s based motor because it has the twin turbos and only m cars tend to come with twin turbos if they're straight sixes now um, sound wise i even see some similarities between them this car is a bit of an animal i can already feel it on break-in and it's really fun to drive of course if this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.